Welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. I'm Brent. I'm Drew. And we're here from the city of brotherly love at Coinvention. And we have with us Charles. Beauvaird. Beauvaird. Now, is that uh, is that French or it what is. is that? It is. It's French. It basically, I mean, originally it was like, bo- like it was spelled differently originally. But then, you know, my ancestors came to America. It means like pretty green. Good green, something like that, you know. Okay, so it's Americanized green. Maybe it's yeah, money. Yeah. So, so tell us, uh, tell us about your uh, thing here at Co- Coinvention. Sure. Okay, so I was invited to come to Coinvention, and I just spoke on a panel. I spoke on a panel about getting the blockchain out to the ninety-nine percent, and the panel was uh, moderated by Wendy O. And I answered several questions, basically from the perspective of a journalist who is educating the public on digital currencies and distributed ledger technologies. So let me ask you a question, because one of the things we're talking about in some of the other segments is the need to try and get the masses into these, you know, because a lot of this is industry related people and then quasi industry related people. What could we, what could we do to get the general masses in to start the educational process from your perspective? The 99 percent you spoke about. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, some of the people I mean, some of this is already taking place. I mean, one good way of doing it is basically ingraining it into the, how should I put this, you know, education of our society. I mean, they are like diff- different colleges are offering uh, blockchain topics in their uh, curricula. So this sort of thing is already taking place. You, you know, we, we are one of our partners is Jorg Molt and Jorg has Satoshi School and we're working. We're, it's actually being picked up by a couple of colleges and stuff. Yep. And, and it is one of those things where where there's a paradigm shift and people's thinking has to change in this adoption process. So, and it's it's the older, it reminds me of the commercial where you see everybody swiping the Visa card yep. and then all of a sudden the person goes to pay cash and stumbles and blocks <laughs> the thing, you know? Yeah. And we're in that movement right now, it seems like. Yep. Yeah, I'm, okay. So, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it might take a little bit for, uh, for people to really grasp this. I mean, it is a little bit uh, esoteric, I would say. Yeah. I mean, when you expa- explain the basics of blockchain to people, I mean, the, the basics of it, I mean, are, I'd say are pretty simple, but it still can take some time to really get it down pat. Yeah. I mean, so uh, it, it, it's, it's a little bit more than, like you said, you know, paying cash or taking a credit card and swiping it. So it may take a little bit of time before it's really, you know, widespread the, until the basics are widespread and everybody understands blockchain and the value that it provides. You know, one of the other challenges is kind of like how the Internet was in the early 90s. You know, they didn't know if it was B2B or B2C or exactly what it's, you know, who thought you'd be ordering all stuff through Amazon, through the Internet. And you'd have Netflix and streaming and Blockbuster Video go away and so on and so forth. And so exactly where crypto is going to go and blockchain in particular throughout society is a little bit difficult to prognosticate. In fact, nobody really can. And I guess that makes it also kind of hard for people to relate. Sure. I mean, uh, you said it's difficult to prognosticate. I think it's. I think you're absolutely right about that. I mean, if like if, if you ask people where they think the markets are going to go, they can make predictions. But uh, it's it's very difficult to tell what's going to happen. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff we're seeing now, the uh, how should I put this? The explosion, basically, of startups in the space. Sure. I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. And if some of those go under, that's perfectly fine in the grand scheme of things. It's really just trial and error. It's like all those startups that existed during the tech boom. And like you were saying, you know, right when people first started using the Internet, they didn't know it was going to be mostly for B2B or B2C. And now people use it for everything. You, you know, Brent, it, this just hit me as we're talking about this. We need to go to York. And what we need to do is the way that children, I've got a little five-year-old grandson, yep. you know, the, the way that children are going in and how they come become acclimated to technology so quickly. Yep. So, so we need to start a Satoshi school for kindergartners. Because oh, yeah. you yeah. talk about mass yeah. adoption, it'll yeah. explode. Start, you know? start, I mean, right out, you know, you come out, okay, here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let's explain to you what cryptocurrency is, child. Yeah. yeah. So, so how long have you been in the space? I'd say... A, uh, between three and four years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I've been following it actively since the beginning of, uh, right around the end of 2015, the beginning of 2016. Yeah. 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 So, so you've got to see, I mean, when we first even started doing our show and it's double authentication and you have to sign this and you, and now what the sponsor of his uh, schoolhouse program yep. is, is a company called Freshwell. And anybody can go to freshwealth.com and you can sign up an account. They keep custody of your crypto and all that. So yep. getting in, we're seeing a lot of this happen. So it's becoming more easier and easier and more and more efficient. You know? yep. And so those are the keys to making this thing really kind of go mainstream. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely going to be a plenty of, I mean, like part of like, you know, what I mentioned about, you know, start all the startups and some of them are going to succeed and some of them aren't. That trial and error is that, I mean, the thing, you know, the, the technologies that are most valuable to the broader community, society are going to get picked up and they're going to spread like yeah. wildfire. And the ones that aren't valuable to society are simply not going to make it. And it's just a matter, it's it's just like survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things I point out to a lot of these, I'm old enough, I can call them crypto kids, okay? I, I point out to them is, is, you know, technology and our ability to create it is great. Um, I've seen statistics that something like 40% of the people still can't program their VCR. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the mass wait, 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 adoption. VCR, you know, that's, no, that's old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, but they still can't program it. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, yeah, I, uh, I'm not. I haven't seen a VCR in like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, DVD player, yes, but I don't really remember, or a Blu-ray, but I, I don't really remember having to program those. Um, yeah. Work them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, yes, you're right Find about that. Yes, I mean, I'd say a lot of people have devices where like, I mean, if you buy a smartphone, you might have a manual that's like 500 pages long. Oh, yeah, that people, nobody reads. Yes, yeah. nobody's going to go through that whole thing unless they designed it or unless their job is to fix yeah. it, or if they're you know involved in some other way where they have to know all that information. Or you can go and just hand it to your five-year-old and he'll tell you how to work in about yeah. 15 minutes. You know, yeah, That's yeah. yeah. Well, well, good, well, keep spreading the word and doing what you're doing. We appreciate okay. you coming on Wild West Crypto Show because it is our mission. To do, we always talk about it in Brent Coin this. We always talk about our redneck buddies out there in the pickup trucks. And if we can get those guys to understand what this is and it's not all you know blue, black web and all that kind of stuff, as that adoption happens and money, more and more money pours into this thing, it'll go quicker and quicker. And as you well know, because especially covering the things that you do, yep. big business and all that stuff is already knee deep in this. Oh, thing. yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I mean, if you're talking about your, you know, you said your, your buddies in the pickup trucks. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's definitely a way that you could explain it to them. You could say like, OK, so, for example, Bitcoin was something that was designed to be completely independent of financial institutions and the government. Yeah. And we're at a a point in history where a lot of, you know, there's widespread distrust of institutions and the government. And so I feel like a lot of people are open to it as an alternate to, you know, just the way society is set up right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on the Wild West Crypto Show. And let's keep in touch, man, because we like we want to see what, how you prognosticate as things move forward. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Folks, thanks for watching the Wild West Crypto Show. Please subscribe to us right here. And you can watch more videos right over here. Additionally, if you'll turn the little bell on, every time we upload a new and exciting video, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching the Wild West Crypto Show.